again, I think the harp has a certain mystique and allure to it. Now, you also write music. That's right. something I have discovered about you. When did you first start composing? So 2015 is, is when I wrote Passage, my first sort of published uh, composition. And I hadn't really done a lot of composing prior to that. I did do, so maybe more arrangements, but my I have a brother who's a percussionist and we did a harp and marimba, recorded a harp and marimba CD in 2001. And I wrote a number of those arrangements, including some that were like maybe compositions. Um, but yeah, I, I certainly didn't think of myself as a composer until 2015. 2005, I'm sorry, 2005. Why, why do you want to compose? Like in 2015, does something happen or you just like, oh, it's time for me to try this out? Well, I mean, I think uh, my feeling is that I, maybe I'm wrong, but I think, I think a lot of classical musicians would love to be a composer, right? I mean, I think there's a certain veneration. We, we play the same composers all the time, right? And there's like, ah, Bach. Um, but I wasn't... Yeah, it's that. But I think also as a, as a classical musician, there's a, there's a quite a intimidation factor there as well. That that so if if you in a lot of genres, of course it's expected that you would write your own music. That's just that's obvious. But in classical music, they, they, there's somehow this you're a performer and not a composer, right? That 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 I think there is this. Yeah, a bit of a divide, and it wasn't always that way, right? I mean, certainly Chopin list, they were both amazing performers and, and composers. And, but somehow it's, it's that, that hasn't been the case. We don't get a lot of performer composers. More in the harp world, I think, because the instrument <laughs> has, doesn't have a ton of music written for it in the classical world compared to, say, piano or violin. And so a lot of that music is written by harpists who compose partly from necessity. Um, so I always liked the idea. And then, and then somehow just sitting down in, in 2005 and writing something and, and, and being happy with it and saying, oh, okay, this is something I could do. Uh, so yeah, I think that's, it, it, it wasn't always a goal, I suppose, but it was certainly always something I would love to be able to do and and so now i'm it's really neat to actually feel that i can do that what's your creative process i'm always interested in knowing how people create something is there a process you follow or is it one of those things where it's like oh if it comes to me then it will happen yeah well i mean I, again i think i think the secret right is to have that schedule so you sit down and, and try to do it every day and that's certainly something that i don't do um and I should do more, right? Because that idea that you might or might not might write anything good if you sit down and try, but you certainly won't write anything good if you don't sit down and try it. So that being said, uh, somehow for me, I found a lot of the, I guess all the pieces, almost all the pieces that I've written tend to come fairly quickly. Again, that idea of, of that wonderful feeling sometimes of, of creating something and having it flow right and then sometimes maybe get stuck a little bit and then and then manage to work your way through that and 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 then and again trying to get that feeling of flow so i, I compose at the harp i i have got a blank manuscript paper i've got my pencil i'll play something get a phrase or a note or something that i'm happy with try to remember it right try to, oh this is good try not to forget it so maybe repeat it a few times yes this is what i want and then i'll write it down pretty sloppily right you know not not worrying about it being perfect write it down and then at some point when I stop and I come back the next day, I'll generally play through from the beginning of the piece, get to that point where I stopped and try, hopefully that will lead me on towards the, the next bit. And then every once in a while, I might have gone on past a point, but then I realize that no, this point, I'm not quite happy with that. That's not really where I want to be. And then maybe rework that. But for the most part, I feel I've been pretty lucky in terms of, but when I do finally decide on something, it is, does end up being what I want in the in the long run. And uh, in, in your YouTube channel, there's a couple video series where you're 
arranging, I think it was a green sleeve and skyboat song, right? Right. And I thought that was the, a pretty good idea because you not only yeah. do you have your scribble, but you also have hopefully <laughs> some video footage of what you have worked through to remind yourself where you're at, right? Yeah, and I think that's something obviously in this day and age, that's something that one could take advantage of, right? Um, I haven't. It, I think you have to balance that with the the potential barriers that might create because that idea of trying to provide as little resistance if there's something you want to do right to to, to as little resistance as possible so maybe that step extra step of setting up a video camera might be enough for you to say oh i'm not gonna i'm not gonna do this today um conversely if you feel that that would be really really helpful when composing trying to make sure that you have get a cheap phone or camera or like yeah an old smartphone would be great and just have that there set up ready to go it doesn't have to be amazing picture quality but enough that you could play that back if you can't remember what something was and do you compose music on your pedal harp your very first piece that, yeah that was on my pedal harp yeah so just so you know, people like me, I don't have pedal harp, so we're, we're going to expect more <laughs> Libra yeah, music yeah, in the yeah, future. Yeah. <laughs> I cannot play a pedal harp music as much as I like it. And I think that's, a, that's for me, it's another barrier for harp sometimes. I think there are a lot of pieces, especially the classical stuff, which a lot of them sound really nice, but they're not very Libra harp friendly. And uh, so you did a project to transcribe some pieces for right. Libra harp. And I cannot tell you how many people appreciate that because many of us don't have access to the computer. Sure, sure. And I think at one point there was that feeling that the the lever harp was just a step on the way to the pedal harp if you were in the classical world. But more and more now people realize that lever harp is great just in and of itself and you don't, it doesn't need to be a goal to get anywhere else. And so there continues to be more and more music written for it and also arranged for it. Um, and, and certainly some things you just can't do, right? And certainly sometimes it's nice to have those extra notes, even if you don't need the pedal system, those extra strings. Uh, but uh, yeah, I think it's great to help unlock that potential of the, the instrument to play not only say traditional Celtic stuff, which it certainly excels at, but also there's all this classical repertoire that can be can be adapted for it and sound great. Um, so yeah, that's, I, I will continue to do that in the in the future. And I and I for as your student, I appreciate that a lot, right? Because I think um, there is the tendency, of, well, human being like things to be easy. We might just not want to touch the lever <laughs> once we have set it up at the beginning. But you have never been one that you know shy away from the lever change and i think you know after months of doing that i've got to the point where i just it just become part of the routine which i think it's good and i i think i would encourage my kids to to do that too and not to shy away from having to figure out the one lever change or the 10 lever change right well it's like anything right the first time you do it it's kind of scary and so same as changing a string right that that uh, it could take you a whole day or several days and be super stressful. But if you end up replacing all your strings and changing them all to get that sort of experience of doing that, you, it becomes much easier. And so, yeah, I think it's it's great. I kind of like the, the, the Bach Prelude number one is a piece for a number of students where it's not super hard, right? The notes, it's not easy, but the notes are not, not a, super hard, but it's got a lot of lever changes. And so it's, it's a great way to kind of go, okay, I played that. I can do anything, right, in terms of levers that, that, that um, yeah, just getting used to changing them. And and again, I just with people, that that expanded repertoire, the, the continuing expansion of repertoire, I think it's a good skill to have because it does. They're there, that you can use them. It makes lots of things possible. I think I think my my intro to lever change with you. I think it was furry least. Yeah, another great one. Exactly, exactly. Right. And and the type of thing where it looks really really intimidating when you first start it, but then again, it, it's 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 not too bad, right? Like it's when once you get used to it, it's, it's, it's not bad. and it's the same thing with pedals on the pedal harp, right? To to try and from the beginning, like let's say you get a pedal harp. And I've never used the pedals before to try and from the beginning do some pedal work so that it starts to become 
something that's just another part of playing the harp rather than, oh no, I have a bunch of pedals to do. Um, right, because even, you know, if you're on a pedal harp, it doesn't mean the pedal changes own. You still have to maneuver it. it just, you know. No, it's, it's, a, you know, it's a whole set of challenges on its own, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Does more of your, most of your students play lever harp, pedal harp, or do you think there's an even split? More, more lever. I think it, it, it kind of mirrors the general demographic to a certain extent that there are a lot more lever harps out there than, than pedal harp. And it's certainly more accessible in terms of price. And... Very much more accessible, right? Yeah. And uh, with, what, what would you say to um, people who are learning the lever harp and they're considering a pedal harp? Would, is that something that you think is a, a natural progression or you know, it's not really necessary? What, what do you think? Yeah, it's, it's so it's a, it really it really depends on the person, right, and the situation. And I guess the main thing I would say is don't feel it. Make sure you, that you do have a reason for for getting the pedal harp, right? Um, don't feel that you need to get a pedal harp just because it's something you have assumed that is true. Um, at the same time, I mean, I think. Pedal harps sound amazing, right? They got more strings. They often maybe have a bigger sound potentially, um, and just is an instrument. They're amazing, but just like it's not always feasible to have a grand piano in your house, um, it doesn't. It doesn't mean you have to have a pedal harp. And so, I guess if you had a huge house and all the money in the world, and you like the harp, yes, get a pedal harp. Of course, might as well. Um, but for most of us, that's not the case. And so, yeah, just trying to think about what it is, the type of music that you want to play, your budget, the space that you have, how, whether you're planning to move it, right? Because again, it's harder to move around. Um, and uh, again, trying to get a chance to play a pedal harp, right? So whether it's at your teacher at a lesson, uh, at a conference, at a harp store, if you're lucky to have one nearby, and get a sense whether this is something that you would like. The nice thing is harps tend to hold their value pretty well. Um, so when most people, most harpists end up having several harps and maybe buying a harp and selling a harp and buying a harp and selling a harp. Um, so it's certainly not set in stone. Yeah, I, I was just thinking, you know, that where we are, I, I call it a little bit of a harp desert. Because it's not like we have easy access to yeah. a harp show room. Right? Yeah. So where where are some of the, the places that we can go? You mentioned some conferences. Is is there any are they usually kind of almost like a trade show kind of idea where you can go and, and look at harps or, or are they more something so else? Like, what would be the there, best way if we have if I have to go find a pedal harp? Yeah. Well, in in a normal world, right, <laughs> with travel and everything possible, um, there are often sort of festivals, conferences, or whatever that will include a, a vendor showroom. So a couple of the ones in the States are Somerset Harp Festival, which is geared towards folk harp. So you will see some pedal harps there because the Virginia Harp Center tends to exhibit there and um, they'll bring some pedal harps, I think Michigan Harp Center as well. But the focus will be on lever harp, so fantastic place to go. So with that, right, they have, I think it's like four days of, of workshops plus this exhibit hall. And, and in some ways it's, it's worth going just for the exhibit hall and a chance to, to play a whole bunch of different harps and, and get a sense because there's nothing like playing a harp. Uh, the American Harp Society is another organization that uh, they, every two years they do a conference that's more geared towards pedal harp. There's certainly more focused towards pedal harp and you'll have more pedal harps in the vendor room then. Um, World Harp Congress is something that's every three years and rotates around the world and again they will have vendor rooms um, and that's tends to in, certainly in the past has been very much pedal harp focused um, with a with a vendor hall uh, i'm not so familiar with all the european festivals i mean of course there's the edinburgh harp festival uh and, and exactly what the you know what the showroom locations or the exhibit halls would be would be like but yeah those can be great and then also just being i guess aware of where is the closest store to you that might have a bunch of harps that you could make a road trip to. So we're in Victoria, I'm in Victoria, BC, you're in, you're in Vancouver, but west coast of Canada, there's uh, Harp Etc. And the Enchanted Harp, I guess, down in Seattle, Puyallup, 
Harps, etc. down in San Francisco, several stores in LA, right? The West Coast trip possible um, would, I guess, be the nearest sort of big... I need two saving accounts, sure. one for the instrument and one for the money to go check out the instrument. <laughs> it's a balance, right? It's a balance because, yes, as you say, there's... And that's when, you know, when my family, when we got this harp, we didn't fly down to Chicago. I didn't fly down to Chicago or anything because it would have added a bunch of extra expense. So you just ordered it from Lion Haley and hoped it was good. Um, and that's uh, that's a valid way to go as well. Well, you still have it for 80 years. I still have it. Back, so yeah, I exactly. think that's a good sign that you made a, well. a smart choice. <laughs> yeah. Do you have any plans to make more recordings in the future so we can listen to the yeah, audience? So I've, I've, I've recorded four CDs of solo harp music and, and then this one with my brother, Harp and Marimba, so Christmas music back in 2001. Um, the the most recent one, the, the Passage CD, is the only one that's online. So the first three are, you can, well, the physical copies are available, but not online. Um, and yeah, I definitely have plans at some point. It's the, the sort of the music industry has changed because that first CD I recorded in 1996 and at that time that's what everyone I mean that's how you listen to music is you had CDs or cassettes or LPs or whatever but you had physical copies of recordings and that it, they, they, they sold right like that was a, that was a from business sense CDs were a good a good business investment um, and now fast forward we're, we're in this streaming age where we expect to be able to hear any, everything for free right like everything is streamable and free um, and so it plus just I guess also the internet offers a way to share the music that we might want to share in a different way than than recordings so it's a little bit tricky that way in the sense i think there's not quite the same uh financial incentive perhaps as there used to be to try to produce a, a recording and instead maybe you end up just doing like i've done a bunch of music videos right where some of those recordings are, are pretty good um but they're maybe they're certainly not as as painstakingly recorded as they would be if I were recording a, 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 an album, a CD or whatever. Um, at the same time, right, you see people using Kickstarter or similar things as a way to kind of pr make sure that uh, a project is viable and, and pre-sale, as it were. Um, so, yeah, it's it's... When I have enough music that I want to record, I will do so for sure. Um, but I don't have any, I don't have any set in stone like deadlines of oh yes, it's, I'm going to be re producing a recording in the next X number of, of months or years or whatever. I'm gonna start with a YouTube playlist, but now, now on that note, and I'm I'm glad that you mentioned about the industry, and I, I mean I, I don't have a lot of friends in the industry, but I certainly right. do have a couple of them, and I think. The general consensus, yeah, it's, it's getting tougher, right, to to get uh, creators to get the proper sort of support, or or even even when you're with a, a big recording company, it doesn't guarantee that you know it's going to be successful. And there's so many factors that come into play. So a lot of people, um, I know, in YouTube will put ads as one way to sort of monetize their work. Right. You never do that. Uh, as far as I can and tell, right. and I think that was a That's conscious true. decision on yes. your end to not do that, right? Yes. And um, but you have a Patreon account, right? I am right. a supporter of. Yes. Um, is that something that is helpful for, for yes. readers like yourself? Well, and I have, I have. It's a, it's a topic for another time. Like I have a whole long. Uh, I've thought, I've thought a lot. Of, I've thought a lot, of, a lot about this subject, right? Um, and yeah, for me, I, I I don't currently put video ads on my on my channel because I find that personally to be very annoying. Um, and it's also I'm not really at the point where it. I'm not losing out on a ton of money. So in general, you might get uh, between one and four dollars per thousand views, right? So if you get if if your video gets a million views 
you could get between one and four thousand dollars of ad revenue. Um, if your if your video gets a thousand views, you might get a dollar to four dollars, right? So, um, and my channel gets about thirty thousand views as a whole per month. So, it's at the point where I'm potentially losing out on some 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 money, but it's it's uh, yeah, it's balancing again. It's easy to have these ideals of I don't like ads. It's uh, but if I if I'm getting millions of views, I'd probably put ads on there, you know. Like, uh, uh. Um, but I do really like the model of of Patreon or Wikipedia or whatever, where it's freely available to everyone, right? That idea that that is freely available to everyone, and then you can support it if you want, so that it's it's it's. Yeah, and hopefully, hopefully, what happens is it, it's tricky, right? Because you, you think of PBS maybe, and sometimes you end up feeling like guilted into trying to support them. Um, whereas to me, the ideal, and this is what I feel, because I support some people on Patreon through other other ways, I feel good about that. Like it makes me feel happy about doing that because yeah, it's 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 supporting this content. You both get to enjoy this content, and you also help more of that happen and let 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 everyone enjoy it um and i think it's i think that type of thing is excellent for smaller niche creators right because again if you're able to get everything becomes easier the more views the more wider audience you have um so with a with a with a more niche audience and certainly harp tuesday is a very niche audience um something like this sort of direct support is fantastic whereas with a huge audience that certainly opens up more possibilities in terms of like ads and stuff like that um yeah anyways yeah it's, it's, it's a fascinating topic right and in terms of the industry uh, harder or not harder i mean i think we're still seeing the effects of recorded music right that that has played out over a century or or whatever of, of being able to at one point the only way you could hear music was with people playing it live and then the radio and then recorded music. Um, and now there's more music than ever, right? We, 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 we can hear and listen to music all the time, but music as a commodity then obviously has become very, very cheap and accessible. Um, and and, and uh, I think it's, it's, it's not worth moaning over that, right? I mean, I think, I think it's just, that's the way it is. Um, and trying to trying to work within that frame. So certainly, one of the things I would I would say to to, to anyone starting in music is professionally is yeah tr don't trying to sell music as a commodity is not a, a great idea. But but if you can but you, there's only one of you. So if somebody wants music, it's a dime a dozen. But if they want you, you're the only you know that that, that there's no substitute. Um, and uh, I think certainly at the same time, the internet has brought a lot of opportunities, removed a lot of gatekeepers, right? And, and allowed you to directly connect with, with fans all over the world. Uh, now I see one of the challenges more and more becoming the huge amount of content out there. It, so it's, it's discoverability, right? That, that becomes potentially a challenge. Um, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, it's it's uh, uh, again when you're dealing in a, in a in a genre where that people do for passion and continue to do even if they're not getting paid. It it's it's you're always going to have like it's it's hard for that to be a way to easily support yourself because. There are going to be so many people wanting to do that. So, but I would definitely post your, your link to your uh, Patreon account. So, if uh, there's any of you who are interested in checking that out, they should check it out. What are some other ways to stay in touch with you and your work? Right. So, uh, subscribe to me on YouTube and, and, and click the notification bell so that Google will hopefully let you know it's all, anyway, let you know when I've uploaded a new video. Um, one of the best ways to stay up to date with what I'm doing is to sign up for my email newsletter. So I send that out. I try to send that out about once a month. 
again if you're on google check your <laughs> ah, google if you're on gmail right and, and you're using the webmail interface just remember to check your promotions tab because stuff from mailchimp the the mailing list that i use often gets sent to to um promotions so if you're wondering why you haven't heard from me maybe that's sitting there in promotions um you can also follow me on social media josh lane harp uh, on instagram uh, Harp Tuesday is on, you can, is, I have a Harp Tuesday page on Facebook. Um, I'm on Twitter, but I don't, I don't engage in it really. But again, I often post when I upload a new video. So I think that's also Josh Lane Harp. Um, are those all the social medias? And, and my website, uh, joshlane.com. And you still maintain harptuesday.com, right? Harp Tuesday, yes. So that's not always. Because you have a master list of all your episodes exactly so again youtube slash google doesn't necessarily make it easy to navigate um and find stuff so on that if, if you're thinking oh uh, i wonder if there's a harp tuesday episode on a particular subject you can go there there's categories like each episode is tagged with categories and you can also just see the chronological list and see if if what you're looking for is there or if something catches your eye and you want to watch it I, I like that website because I, I can I can memorize all your episodes in exactly. five minutes. And exactly. YouTube is not the best for searching, so I often will go there and do a control find if I'm interested in learning about a topic. And and a lot of times you you got it covered, so it, it's a pretty exactly. Handy. Well, like, yeah, ten years. It's and you're currently publishing Hub Tuesday every other week. Every other week, yep. Awesome. That's cool. been the case. That's been the goal, at least, for most of most of its its life. It's been every two weeks. Hasn't awesome. always been achieved, but yeah. Yes, and yeah. ten years of Harp Tuesday. We just celebrated that last exactly. uh, year with you towards the end of the year. Yeah. So congratulations on that. I think yeah. that's a really great uh, achievement. I don't know if I was stick with this situation for ten years. We'll see. <laughs> Well, thank you very much for spending your time and talking oh, no to us. Problem. About My... um, sure. Any party words, any, any things you want to tell people who want to try the harp? No. Right. Well, I mean, I, again, I think the harp has a certain mystique and allure to it. And it's a beautiful instrument to try because it does. It doesn't, it's, it sounds in tune, right? You, you, and it's, it, it's easy to get started, right? It's easy to make a nice sound on it. And the challenge is often find the harp but if you if you can find and rent a harp or something um go for it right it's, it's a fantastic instrument and and again just a kind of a magical sound and it's also really neat just the sensation of, of playing a harp and feeling the vibrations of, of the sound waves you know traveling into your body and and, and, just, and yeah it's a, it's a great instrument it's a great instrument okay, so try it if you if it went into exactly. try it <laughs>